Good afternoon, welcome to our channel. I'm gonna teach you how to replace a control board on the condenser unit for a Mr. Cool unit today. So stick around. Okay, this process is super simple. It's only a few steps and any one of you can do it. Before I show you how to do this, I wanna talk about the warranty on these Mr. Cool units. So if you do register your unit, then you get a full seven year warranty, I believe it is, up from the five year. But it is a limited warranty. So you really need to read that warranty agreement before you call Mr. Cool. So Mr. Cool has 18 points here for their warranty and what is covered and what is not. I'm not gonna read through all 18, but I'm gonna touch some highlights that were relevant to us and might help you out before you go through the hassle of calling them. And mainly I wanna focus on what the warranty does not cover. Okay, number one, labor or other costs incurred for diagnosing, repairing, removing, installing, shipping, servicing, or handling of defective parts, replacement parts, or new units. I had to pay shipping on this, but of course they've got great deals on shipping. This is pretty heavy, probably about 15 pounds, and I only paid $12 to Mr. Cool for them to ship it to me. Okay, point number two, normal maintenance as outlined in the installation or owner's manual. You can't claim the warranty for that. Number three, failure, damage, or repairs due to faulty installation, misapplication, abuse, or improper servicing, of course. Number four, failure to start due to voltage conditions, blown fuses, open circuit breakers, etc. So if you've got an electrical problem or you've connected the wrong uh, electrical wire size or the wrong breaker size or anything, that's not covered. Of course, then it says, and this goes along with labor to repair this, any cost to replace, refill, or dispose of refrigerant, including the cost of refrigerant. So when I had my friend come check this, I did pay for him to put some refrigerant in it, including his service call. And of course I got the friend price for it, which is nice. But he has to make a living, so I'm happy to pay him. Here's one that's really important. Products moved from their original installation address. So if you take this thing, you take it out of this house, you take it up to your hunting cabin or whatever, and you try to connect it up there, it's not covered anymore. And there are obviously a bunch more, but read through those on their website documents. They have them there for you before you call them. That's gonna save you some heartache if they say no to your warranty claim. For us, they were very easy to deal with on the phone in getting this. It took talking to probably four different people which is no big deal. And it just took me taking a picture of the receipt from my friend for the service and sending it to them. Leave me a comment if you've had a different experience with Mr. Cool. I've had nothing but positive experiences with them so far. Okay, first step is to remove the top cover from the condenser so that we can get to the old board and remove it. Now, Mr. Cool says specifically that certain units might have different screw patterns. So this one might not match yours. This is a Gen 4. Now, as a quick note, when you call Mr. Cool and they're asking you to help diagnose the problem, there's a small computer board out here which will show you a code, if you can see that in there. This is gonna help them diagnose if there's a problem out here. But right now, I have the breaker turned off for this and it's completely disconnected. But of course, check everything before you work on the unit. Should be just this one more screw underneath this cover to be able to take this top off. You might need to get under there and pry it up. There we go. Over here is an electrical diagram and right here is a list of the codes that it will throw. It tells you what each code is and what it's pertaining to. I can't remember what I mentioned in the other video, but our error code was PC31, which is system low pressure protection. However, we checked that pressure and it was fine. So that's why my technician determined that it was this board and Mr. Cool agreed. Hopefully that is the case. Okay, let's get this out. There's a screw here in the front. There's two here on the top. That's all I can see for now. So let's take this out. Looks like we're gonna have to take these two off also. These are a slight bit different, so keep them separate. Actually, there's two more. There's one here and there's one here, but to be able to get to those, we need to loosen this bracket down here. Now you can lift this up just enough to get these two screws on this bracket out for the control board. On the top, this wire, which is in a protective sleeve, needs to come out of this little hook right here, like that. Then you can lift the board from this side 
to start to access all the wires underneath. And honestly, this is quite tight. The wires will not allow you to pull it up very far. And all of the connections are on this end. Now, Mr. Cool says that all of these wire connectors are different, so there's no way to mess them up. But I'm still going to take a picture of them anyway. You can tilt it up from the backside to give your hand a little bit more access to get in there. Now, some boards, like my replacement board here, will come with the wires attached to the actual board. And there are connections that are in between the board and the condensing unit itself. Those are buried in there and zip tied, so I'm going to have to cut those zip ties and be very, very careful about what I cut. That's helping a little bit, but these wires are still very short and do not want to give me much room at all to unplug them. Now you can see all of these connectors down in here that need to be reconnected with our new board. Some of them are pretty far down in here, but now that I've undone those zip ties, I can get to them. This is absolutely not as simple as Mr. Cool makes it out to be, and they have a video on it, but it does not cover all of this. You can still do it with no problem. So some of these wire, like the brown and blue and these two whites, actually wrap around this bracket and connect here. And they are labeled and they are also labeled on the replacement board. Here are the white ones. So as a DIYer, if I would have known that, I would have taken these off first and given myself a little bit more play in here, but their instructional video needs to be better. Now, when you are taking these clips apart, be aware that there are some little clip holders on the ends of these. So don't lose them and don't break them. Now keep in mind, some of these connectors are connected down low to other wires with these pigtails, but others are connected directly to the board, and they do not give you much room to move this. So with this gray wire, it seems like it would disconnect, but there are some glue on it. So looking at our replacement board, this gray wire is connected, so there is a connection down in here with this gray wire somewhere that needs to come off. And I found it and it's here in the front of this board. And that should be it. Okay, here's the new board. Now just do everything I just did in reverse and reconnect everything. You can see on the top these two cutouts for wire management. So when you get your wires in there, just make sure they're nice and neat and going back through these two so they fit nicely back in the condensing unit. Okay, I just want to show you really quick on this Gen 4 18,000 BTU dual zone unit, the new board comes with these two connectors right here to port number CN29. I don't know what these are for because everything else is connected properly and there's nothing else in this unit. On the old board down here, here's the CN29 port. There was nothing here. Before I Screw this back down. I'm going to energize the unit and see if it throws any codes. Hopefully this takes care of the problem. If not, we're going back to square one. But now you know how to replace a board in a Mr. Cool condensing unit. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. And if you're interested, go check out my friend's son's company. He's doing these forge and flag t-shirts. They're pretty cool. Link is in the description. Now go check out this video right here, which is how to install a Mr. Cool mini split. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time. Bye.